Hello, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. And if you like what I talk about, click the thumbs up. If you don't, press the thumbs down. And if you want to subscribe, you can. And if you want to share, you can. Um, this is an open forum. You can engage with the subscribers. They're very good at going back and forth with information and responding in a respectful way. So you're welcome to do that. Um, today I wanted to talk about Trump, Prince Andrew and Boris Johnson. And why would I waste my energy and my breath talking about these three? Well, because I think they represent society today. And, you know, not because they're in positions of power. It doesn't mean they're not human. Um, Technically, when they hold those positions, you these are people you are meant to look up to. These are people who s set the standard. And yet, just look what's happening to our society. Is this reminiscent of our society? Is this what our society has come to? Where people in power are ridiculed because of their behaviour. I mean, Trump being impeached, then he's got a history of sexual molestation, then you've got Prince Andrew, for, oh, for Christ's sake. I mean, at his age, and do you notice how everybody's jumping on him? The media, you know, if they could crucify him, they would. But in comparison, well, I don't even know if it's in comparison, I don't even know whether you can compare ills compare bad behaviour, I really don't know. And then you have Boris Johnson, known by his wife as a philanderer, but worse than all of that, because he's governing our country, he has sent out un really, um, what kind of remarks would I call them? Insults. And then he claims it's satire. When you use satire, you use satire to improve. It's a way of exaggerating foolishness and trying to get people to change their behaviour by the way you criticise them. So you criticise them in a way that's supposed to be jokey, but he, the, what he says isn't funny. What he says isn't funny, so it's not satirical at all. He's like a typical Brit who says what they mean and then they say, oh, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, you're too sensitive. Why do you take it that way? Oh, it wasn't meant like that. So when, you're when he was referring, when he was pulled up on, I hate to keep repeating it, but when he was pulled up on the flag-waving piccaninnies with the watermelon smile, how can that be satirical? What are you trying to teach them? How are you trying to change their behaviour by making that remark? Talking about Muslim women as bank robbers and letterboxes, how are you improving their behaviour by making those remarks? The reform that went out with Stephen Lawrence and he was talking about that shouldn't that, that shouldn't have happened. How do you how is that behaviour acceptable? I mean he said some really, really um, uncomfortable remarks, uncomfortable for black people, uncomfortable for women. And I'm only focusing on him because he is the one who is supposed to be leading the country. Trump, he's in America. He's doing his damage there. Andrew, Prince Andrew, he's, he's in a world of his own, really. And yes, they're trying to pull him down, but his behaviour is not going to impact us. But the behaviour of Boris Johnson is going to impact every single one of us. When I say every single one of us, I guess I'm talking about black people, I'm talking about ethnic minorities, I'm talking about women, I'm talking about the gay community, I'm talking about all the minorities, in quotes. It is going to affect. And I just wanted to um, go through this. Okay, President Trump, 
He's been accused of pressuring Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, to dig up damaging information on Joe Biden and his son Hunter. So apparently asking foreign entities for help in winning a US election is illegal. So it would have been okay if they were American entities, but because they were foreign entities, that was illegal. Um, so that's him being competitive. That's what he's like. He, he pays for what he wants. Um, but what is what was more disconcerting is that everyone heard he wanted to grab that woman by the pussy. He was talking about Alva Johnson. And that went out all over the news in every single country, and yet they still voted in president. So what does that tell you about the culture of the people, of the society that we live in? When you can hear that about your president and not bat an eyelid. So, um... Apparently, Jessica Leeds, a former travelling salesperson, alleged that Mr Trump grabbed her breasts and tried to put his hand up her skirt. I mean, it's such gross behaviour, so ungentlemanly. And it just it's the behaviour of someone who feels entitled, who feels as though they have a right. And then we have Prince Andrew, Duke of York. He claimed he was taken... He had taken his daughter, Princess Beatrice, to Pizza Express in Woking on the night he is accused of sleeping with Roberts, a sex slave of Epstein. Andrew also said he did not regret having been a friend of Epstein, who killed himself in jail in 1966. I mean, what is the problem there? Is the problem that she was a sex slave or is it the problem that he just had sex with somebody? Or is it the problem that he is associated with Epstein? I mean, like I said, this is all reminiscent. This is all representative of the society we live in today. The fact that it's Prince Andrew, should it make a difference? Is he held at a higher standard than everyone else? Is he not a human? So I don't know why I, the focus, I'm, I'm not quite sure if I'm missing something here. Um, maybe I am, I don't know, but this is all I found. So I'm just trying to think about these people who they're putting in the spotlight and then what really matters for our country is those who they're putting in power, not those who are putting in the spotlight. Those who are there putting in power, those are the ones we need to be worried about. And a lot of dirt is coming up and, you know, I was listening to um, the Jewish rabbi who was having a go at Jeremy Corbyn. That is so typical because you know Jewish people run things. You can't say nothing about them, you know. But that shouldn't take away his credibility. That should not take away his credibility. But the fact that the Jewish are powerful is where, um, that's where the problem lies. It's a very, very sensitive subject. Um, so the US court papers have alleged that the Duke of York touched a woman while on his lap as she played with a spitting image puppet of him and an almost 2,000 page of a lawsuit was released in defamation case involving Virginia Geoffrey who in 2015 claimed Prince Andrew slept with her three times and Epstein's ex-lover, Ghislaine Maxwell. He was accused of having a sexual encounter with her when she was 17. That might be a problem because, well, she's under 18. I think such of limitations is under 16. I think that's when it becomes a problem. She was 17 in London and New York, and a year later at a party on Epstein's private land in the Virgin Islands. So what I don't understand is, is this about him having sexual encounters? Or is it about who he's had sexual encounters with? Another document describes an alleged sexual encounter between Miss Guilfrey, now 35, and Andrew in a bathtub. I mean, who bloody cares? I don't care about all that stuff. Do you? Do you really care about all that stuff? 
Or do you care about that person who's intending to run our country and drag it into the ground? 20% of women and 4% men have been sexually assaulted since the age of 16, which is equivalent to 3.4 million women and 631,000 male victims. 510,000 women and 138,000 men aged 16 to 59 had experienced some kind of sexual assault in the last year. You see, with to me, with um, Prince Andrew, it appears that all of his um, all of his um, sexual encounters were consensual. There's no, there's nothing, not as opposed to Trumps, where they're saying it was that they didn't want it. It was unwanted attention. So, I don't know. But this Boris Johnson, he's been called a philanderer by his ex-wife, i.e. a man who loves women and is always dating other women. Boris's second wife was always put, has always put up with her husband's philandering. One friend has said she sees it as a childish side of his personality, which one day he'll grow out of. So apparently he's... He's an obsessive philanderer. So um, Boris philandering along with Donald Trump and Prince Andrew does not bother me, but Boris Johnson taking on the race to presidency or prime minister, it does bother me. Boris represents a large part of our British society who insults individuals and then pretend it wasn't meant that way. People are being too sensitive. They have a chip on their shoulder. That's what we're told. In 2000, Boris Johnson claimed that Ferson's reforms were wrong. In 2002, like I said, the Africans as flag waving pickaninnies. Um, you see, in 2018, Boris Johnson compared Muslim women to bank robbers, robbers and letterboxes. Um, and a tell mama reported that these comments were directly linked to a 375% rise in anti-Muslim hate crime. The thing is, these people, they've got the power to speak. And whilst they do not say things directly, it's by implication and it causes problem. I mean, they're talking, they're telling us as um, social media people or listeners or even people who write on social media don't do anything to incite violence don't do anything that um, could be considered hate crime and yet you have people in power like this who say it by innuendo and get away with it what is the difference that is what they're doing if by him saying that there was a 375% rise in anti-Muslim hate crime, that means he was inciting violence by making that statement. Does he does he go under does he go under scrutiny? No, he gets away with it. They just look at it as though, oh, it was a um just a statement he made. I'm being satirical. That's not a satirical statement. You can't hide under satire. Writing for The Spectator in 2002, I know this is some time ago, but it tells you an insight of his, into his character. Johnson defended colonialism and advocated Britain reinstated control over the colonies in Africa. He said, the problem is not that we were once in charge, but that we're not in charge anymore. This is Boris Johnson. He wrote, the best fate for Africa would be if the old colonial powers or their citizens scrambled once again in her direction on the understanding that this time they would not be asked to feel guilty. This is the man, you know, wants to go back and colonialise Africa, said it should never have stopped. Colonialism should never have stopped. That was the only mistake that it stopped. What does that tell you? In 2016, Boris Johnson wrote a column in The Sun when Barack Obama removed Winston Churchill's bus from the Oval Office, stating it was a symbol of the part Kenyan president's ancestral dislike of the British Empire, of which Churchill had been a fervent defender. 
He said Britain should axe large chunks of the anti-racism industry. So while all three have philandering in common, racism to this degree is the worst. And to think he's running, he's going to be running this country, it's kind of scary. But, you know, people, I think people really underestimate. You know what I think people think? I think people, you know, because I have some pseudo-racists at work. And I think that they, um, when they think about Boris getting in, I think somehow... They think he can magically wave a wand and get rid of all the immigrants. Their total focus is on the immigrants and they love his little snides and they love his satire. But I don't think they realise the damage he's going to do to the country and how it's going to impact them. They are not rich. They are not well off. They're no better than you and me. They're in there earning a living and they want their paycheck every week. When everything goes tits up, they're going to wish that they hadn't put Boris Johnson in because they're not, look, I, don't, I think they're looking at it on a very superficial level. And I remember there was something that somebody said to me and I thought, oh, I must remember that. And of course it's gone out of my head because I didn't write it down. But it just showed me that they really are not thinking of the depth. And this isn't about saving my back. This isn't about um, racism as such, even though racism is in it. It's about the people who are so, oh, I know what I was watching. I was watching Gogglebox. And he was saying that the NHS is not up for grabs with Donald Trump and then one of the guys in Gogglebox said oh see he said it out in the open he said it out in the open there's you know he said that there's the NHS is not up for grabs um to Don it's not it's not oh you know what I mean it's not being put on the table for Donald Trump so it has to be true he says he wouldn't say it on TV he wouldn't say it on public if he didn't mean it but these people have been saying things in public and not meaning it for God knows when. What about when they said they were going to put up, when they put that senior poster up and they made it look like they were all immigrants coming and invading the UK? What about when they said that NHS was going to get so much money? They tell blatant lies to get in. And that's what I found frightening because that guy on Gogglebox genuinely believed what he was saying when he said he's not on the it's not on the table. And another one who said another one said something because they were showing that debate between Jeremy Corbyn and um, Boris Johnson. And I'm not telling anybody to vote either way, but I'm just saying you cannot take what they say as gospel. You have to look at their character and the history. You have to look at their behaviour. How can you just sit there and say, oh, if he said it, that means it's true. So, so, and what frightens me is that these are the people who are going to be voting him in who haven't got a clue. And they think that it's going to be okay. That what he's saying is right. They're the same ones who are going to be suffering when the NHS goes to the Americans. Same people. It's scary how naive people are and how trusting people are. It's absolutely scary. But I'm just one little woman in this big, big world. What can I say? What do I know? I'm just ranting, I guess. I don't even know where I'm going with this, but... That's all for now. I am going to throw in the towel. Goodbye.